Hello to all my London South art hubbers. We are looking this week at 20th century British artist Barbara Hepworth. And what I think you find really fascinating about Hepworth is how she managed to show, to capture entire worlds in her sculptures. Hepworth loved and was incredibly inspired by the shapes and textures that she saw in the countryside around her where she was living for a large part of her life in St Ives down in Cornwall and it was these shapes these textures that she carved into both wood and stone and little sneak a uh, sneak glimpse into what you're doing today potentially a bit of carving not into wood or stone but if you can get your hands on it a bar of simple hand soap or drawing on to and stacking stones. We'll look at that a little bit more later on. First, however, we're gonna take a look at some of her sculptures, some of which may look familiar to you, but for others, I think you're gonna to need to use your imagination. There's not really any right or wrong answers as to what these are for sure and what they represent, because it's about you bringing your thoughts and your feelings to them and interpreting them through your own eyes. Is it perhaps a stone? Is it a cloud? Is that a person or maybe a mountain? Let's take a closer look. Born in Wakefield in Yorkshire at the turn of the century in 1903, Barbara Hepworth grew up surrounded by countryside and she said that all my early memories are of forms and shapes and textures moving through and over the landscape with my father in his car, the hills were sculptures and the roads defined the form. Above all, there was the feeling, the sensation of moving physically over the curves and contours of fullness and concavities, through hollows and over peaks, feeling touching through mind and hand and eye. That is someone who, from a very early age, can feel and sense themselves as an artist. Barbara Hepworth studied at Leeds and from there she went on to travel around Europe and later moved to London. But she found the atmosphere and landscape here in London cramped and difficult to draw inspiration from the natural world around her which she'd been so used to as a young child. So, in 1939, at the beginning of the Second World War, Hepworth moved to Cornwall with her husband, painter Ben Nicholson. It was then that Hepworth found the power she'd been able to find in the claustrophobic city. It was there, by the sea, with this renewed connection to the landscape that she produced some of her most incredible sculptures of her entire career. She said it herself, this relationship between the figure and the landscape is so important to me, I can't feel it in a city. This view is of her studio in St Ives and you can see a real topsy-turvy piling of materials. Those were used for this sculpture, oval sculpture, very simply named. It was made at a time when materials for art were really quite rare, so she had to focus on her drawings and her pencils and paintings, such as drawing for sculpture here. And as a very busy mum, her time was scarce. She had four children, including triplets, and she said herself her day was spent running the nursery with children, making the tiny garden for food, trying to feed and protect the children. So making art, she had to squeeze every last minute of the day for that. Another of her works, Pelagus, which means sea in Greek, is directly inspired by one particular view of the bay at St Ives in Cornwall. 
from that view, she created a hollowed out spiral form and pulled strings tightly across wood. And this was to represent the raw and rough coastline and weather of Cornwall. But why did she make holes in her sculptures? Well, Hepworth said it was a way to show the insides of the sculpture as well as the outside. Remember, they're 3D objects, you can walk around them. It also let light through heavy blocks of stone and wood and metal that she used to make them. You can look through these big pierced holes and spaces and you can look at what is behind and around. If anything, it's a great thing to play peekaboo with, which my baby enjoys. She said, I think every person looking at a sculpture should use their own body. You can't look at a sculpture if you're going to stand stiff as a ramrod and stare at it. With the sculpture, you must walk around it or bend towards it. It's about finding other viewpoints on the world. Looking, really looking, and exploring and playing. For some people looking at Hepworth's work, they just see a hole, a hole in an object. But for other people, people who are thinking and looking carefully, they see an entire world or they see a window into an entire world. This week, I want you to really take your time and to think carefully as to what you want to show. What sort of precious object enclosed maybe in another object, something being protected perhaps, using perhaps the bar soap or sculpting with clay tools or using play-doh, plasticine, maybe you've got some clay at home. I want you to try and make your own little miniature Hepworth inspired sculpture that can be yours to sit and reflect on and treasure for a long, long time to come. Today I'm using soap and clay to show you how you can carve and mould to make your own Barbara Hepworth inspired sculpture. And importantly, I'm going to put down this old mat um, for my clay work. If you're using clay dough or something similar, it's always good to protect the surface upon which you're working. You can see this has been used quite a lot. I've got a little bit of water which will be useful to help me smooth the surface of my clay. And then for my soap, I'm using Dove soap. Make sure you use something that you know is um, appropriate for your skin. Um, I've just got a simple clay tool here. You can use a glue stick or if you have permission with an adult home that you can carve out using a spoon, a fork, um, up to you. Let's have a look first of all at our lovely scented soap. It's a good idea to draw your design on both sides of the soap before you begin with a pencil. Then use your clay tool or with adult permission a knife to cut the corners off. After that you can really get into it. Carefully scrape away at the edges and twist into the surface to make holes. You can even use potato peelers to make smooth edges turning your soap over and over again to make sure you're doing both sides. This is a 3D object after all with a sturdy base. Now I have wetted my soap, I've kept it dry um, and I've kept my mat underneath because it's producing as you can see a lot of carvings. But at this stage I'm very happy with that and I know that this could stand independently. I could also start to add bits and bobs into the cut through points, very importantly because this is a 3D sculpture that it stands. I'm clearing away now, getting ready for my clay work. Clay is so ideal because you can easily mould and manipulate, that means twist it and pull it and push it and pinch it into different shapes using just your hand. You don't need tools really at all. I've used them at the end here for a few line textures but you can use only your hands to make a Hepworth inspired sculpture. The thing that will be helpful is using the water to smooth over any cracks 
And if you want to join any little parts, a little bit of extra water will make a slip glue that will allow those to stick really securely.